Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Today we're going to be working on the greenhouse and we're probably going to be finishing those up. But first of all, we're going to we're going to do something I've probably been sitting on for a while. I didn't actually realize I had this thing, but I had this like little green gear that lets you set your spawn. So now when I get killed by wolves, which believe me, will still be happening. Um we will no longer spawn in the middle of a, of a lake anymore. We'll, we'll be spawning in our house, which is nice. We're going to smash up the copper that I got in the last episode, which I did get quite a lot of copper. And we're going to be turning a lot of it into brass. And the reason being is uh, I want to finally sort out this lighting issue. The issue being that we do not have very much lighting. And a reminder, I have like two other floors that I want to eventually light up as well and I don't want to use up fat in order to do that so we're, we're making brass we're making a ton of brass now buckle in buckle up because we're gonna be brassing brassing it up so um, we do have our first little torch and it's a really nice thing the, the the torches are a really nice little quality of life thing because not only do they shed light but they also hold a torch I know I know that's like very much in the description of said thing but you know like it's the little things that that you really end up appreciating um the fact that it holds the torch means you can put it above or near adjacent a thing that you tend to need a torch for like for instance a forge for heating up uh alloys or bars of any kind or uh you know for instance a crucible full full of uh, things that you want to smelt so um you know a heat source is a, is a nice thing that torch will never go out as long as it's in the torch holder. So that's a really nice little thing. These are these are touches in Vintage Story that I really appreciate because the thing is, is that though Vintage Story is a game very much rooted in realism, um, it also makes a few compromises for the sake of the you know player enjoyment, which I, I really got to say is just always super appreciated. Um, sometimes when things are fully realistic, they are not as fun. It, or even as immersive as if the player has the option to kind of opt out of some of that difficulty. So though it doesn't make sense the torches never go out, I appreciate that they don't because I would not really enjoy having to relight torches every X amount of time. Even if it was like a long time, it would it would start to irk on me eventually. Um, I know that event originally, oh, let me talk about this first actually. Um, so one new feature uh, in the update is you have to hold a hammer in your um, offhand in order to chisel things. So I, I noticed a little thing that needed a little nub that hadn't gotten chiseled. And when I went to chisel it, uh, I couldn't because I need a I need a hammer now in order to chisel. So that's a real pain in the butt. Um, it's not really, a, but it, it does make chiseling a little bit higher demand. Um, so I, I remember a long time ago uh, in Minecraft, it was near like uh, one of the original Halloween updates oh, back when he who will not be named was still working on it. And uh, this was the nether update I recall. Um, there was originally the plan to make it so that torches in Minecraft would go out and you had to kind of keep fueling them and you would um, of course also be able to make lanterns uh like in vintage story and i wonder if vintage story hasn't taken the, the cue from that specific uh kind of outlined update because it never happened as you as you know minecraft went a different direction um i can't really tell or say what kind of direction minecraft went into like is it just an rpg like is that what we're doing is it a sandbox rpg can we can we classify it as such? Uh, I know Vintage Story is more of, uh, you know, a kind of survival sandbox. Um, you know, it feels a bit more rigidly defined as as that than than Minecraft. Minecraft doesn't really feel like a survival game anymore. It feels more like an RPG, um, and you know that's that's a good thing. But it sometimes it feels like it didn't really lean into that punch as much. Um, it, it felt more like it, uh, it, it's still pretending in some ways of, that it's, you know, a survival game. Maybe that's holding it back. Maybe the survival genre is holding Minecraft back a little bit. But, uh, who can I say? I'm not a Minecraft, uh, content creator. Thank God. Who, who, 
who would honestly want that from me? Uh, not, not I, not, not I. So um, we do have, I guess I, I was gonna make some more uh, molds for ingots, but I, it turns out that I don't really need them because the, uh, the ingots um, cool at about exactly the same rate as you can heat up another eight, like basically enough, uh, enough uh, metal for uh, eight more ingots. So it works out really perfectly. You can, you can like, you know, wait for the new set to heat up while the old set is cooling and then they pretty much uh, finish at the same time. Uh, yes, I could be doing more at once, but uh, I think, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Uh, at the, you know, the most, the worst case scenario is like, oh, I w yeah, we're, we're dying to wolves still. That's still happening in this. Um, the worst case scenario is I have to do like three bulk sets of ingots. And this is like the most uh, smelting I will likely ever do at once. Um, I'm, sur I'm sure someone's going to quote me on that uh, several episodes from now when I'm doing much more. But like, honestly, you shouldn't need to, you shouldn't need that much of uh, any kind of metal, any smelting. Um, you know, and I have tons of metals right now, so it doesn't really feel necessary. But there, I wanted to have a ton of brass because I want to have a ton of torch holders. Um, so, and they are expensive. It's, you know, regardless of the fact that you get two torch holders for making it, it still costs two plates and those plates cost two bars each. So that's four bars to make two torch holders. So that's two, two bars, uh, a torch holder. Like that's, that's expensive. Um, no matter how you slice it, that, that is really expensive, but it is lighting and ultimately, uh, it is, I should say permanent lighting. So, um, it solves quite a lot of problems at once. And, uh, in addition to the fact that it's also a heat source, so we can, you know, take it off the wall and then, um, use it to, to light something if need be. Um, so I finally <laughs> lit up these, um, these pit kilns, they've been kind of pending for a long time. I didn't have the sticks or the grass to uh, finish that off, but there's a lot of stuff in there that were that are required for certain projects. Um, I hope that no one gets upset with me on this one, but certainly let me know if it does bother you because I, I will fix it eventually, but I decided to continue building this greenhouse out of claystone instead of andesite or granite. I didn't have the andesite and granite. I haven't really been digging in granite and I don't really have enough andesite. And so therefore it's made out of two separate um, kind of materials. I can fix it later, uh, but that would require quite a bit of extra time. Um, not, not, not a big deal really, um, like the, the time I mean, but uh, I can understand how it might bother some that it is inconsistently built. Um, this is the problem with trying to set a style for building certain structures is that you don't, you know, you end up not having the materials and you end up, end up with way more of the other materials and, uh, you, you know, you could either stay consistent or you can actually finish the job. Um, doing both is, is very difficult and time consuming, but I do like the style of the granite and andesite together, but I had way more claystone and so just ended up being that way. I really wanted to finish the second um, greenhouse quotation marks, the second part of the greenhouse, uh, because now that I now that it is finally kind of springtime, and here we have new dwellers, surface drifters. These guys really creep me out in the, the update. Uh, now that it's basically it's warming up and, and it's finally springtime, I really want to get the greenhouses going. Um, they're not necessarily better in springtime, but you know, like I just, I, I need to get farming going. It's, it's been uh, pending for far too long and I am getting some turnips from the first greenhouse, but, uh, getting, you know, getting more crops going in the second greenhouse is going to be super necessary, uh, including things like flax, like, uh, and not that flax is super necessary, but it will be necessary for a lot of our advanced projects. So we finally have enough brass there, you think? I don't know, I, I think I do. Uh, let's see, let me see, do some math. It's eight times three is gonna be 24. I know, that I'm so good at math. Um, and that is going to be, well, it's gonna be two, two sets of torches, torch holders each. So that means eight is uh, four torch holders. 
Um, so that means we have four. We're going to get 12 in the end of 12 torch holders. Do you think that's enough? Not even close, right? Probably not. Like, we're, we're going to need tons and tons of these, right? Because I'm going to want to have them. Uh, you know, I'm going to want to have some in the basement. I'm going to want to have some in the second and third floor you know, in the attic. Uh, we're going to want to have some in the greenhouse probably at some point. I'm not sure, um, you know, there's fun, the, the greenhouses are very finicky, so I'm not sure if they're going to, to you know, play nice with torch holders. They might, but I, I really kind of don't want to mess with them too much. Like, they're, they're working now. It actually tells me the, uh, the plus five degrees Celsius for being in a greenhouse, so um, I'm happy about that. I don't want to mess with them, and uh, they are growing crops very rapidly. Um, thanks in due uh, part to the, uh, the the medium fertility soil, which I've also enriched with bone uh, bone meal and what was the other one? I can't remember. Um, something. Oh, saltpeter. Saltpeter as well. So we've got our first set of two uh, torch holders, and we also have a, just an absolute mess of drifters for some reason hanging outside, and their, to their textures are still broken. That'll get fixed in the next episode, I'm pretty sure. So I decided to uh, do a little target practice with our bow and also just kind of get comfortable with it. And I am pretty comfortable with it. It's a, it's a really, really nice weapon. It's doing quite a lot for us. Uh, I do, I am taking damage here mostly due to starvation still. Um, you'd think that I would figure things, figure that out, um, you know, along with uh, fighting drifters, you'd think I'd figure out food. That guy falls into our old mine shaft and he's basically lost to the world, but uh, we, we do, I do end up dying here, mostly to starvation, and I think, yeah, there's a drifter inside our house who gets a lucky shot, but that's fine. Um, honestly, nothing more disturbing than spawning in your house, knowing there's a drifter in it, but not seeing it right away, but we finally take care of it, and we're still doing more, um, Torch holders, those, that's going to be our second set that I'm working on, but I, I really wanted to have a torch holder outside here because, uh, you know, I'm going to be using it both for pit kilns and for uh, the bloomeries, and the bloomeries are going to become more of a thing uh, maybe in the next episode, but uh, that area is working out pretty well. I, I, I think it, you know, it looks okay. I, I think the pit kilns kind of ruined the aesthetic of the whole thing, but I, the whole aesthetic, the whole purpose and function of that shack is literally to hold the pit kilns and the bloomeries. So um, here I try making uh, arrow. These are arrowheads. These are, I believe, they're tin bronze arrowheads. I wanted to make some nice arrowheads, and I decided to go for the advanced one. And these are pretty tricky to make if you're not a little bit uh, familiar with how to to you know smith in vintage story. It's gonna feel a little bit. Um, difficult, almost impossible if you're, you, you don't know how to kind of basically pull up the pick, the, the, the voxels. Um, it, it feels, it felt pretty challenging and I, and I'm pretty used to it. So, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just bad, <laughs> but and anyway, we have some tin bronze arrows and, uh, I, I don't know if I captured there, unfortunately, but they, they have a really good damage. They, I think I have 1.5 pen damage and then they also has like have like a 10% chance of breaking uh, instead of like a 20 or 30% chance. So they're basically going to be our arrows. I only have the nine right now because mostly because I don't have a lot of feathers, but uh, you know, those are going to be our arrows for quite a lot of combat. Um, and I decide since I am using the bow, I, I would go ahead and make a couple of m more um, of the, the what, do you, what would you call them? Bow staffs and uh, get them drying now. I wanted to kind of like just place them against the wall, but apparently that's not a thing you can do. So I had to put them on the tool rack. Um, and I had to, I wanted to double check, like I put that hammer against the wall, I was like, All right, am I sure I did it right? But yeah, I did it right. So I put it on the tool rack and so I have two more drying. Um, those should be well and, you know, well done um, before I need another one. The bow staff seems to have pretty good endurance sucks that it does have endurance. I wish I could repair it rather than make a new one, but I understand that uh, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. But they're, they're just very expensive is honestly just a thing. Mostly because I haven't, I've been really lazy about collecting resin. 
We can see our, our greenhouse is like really starting to pay off now and, and we're actually starting to get some turnips out of it. We'll get some, uh, I, I can't remember what I have growing there, but carrots, we have some turnips, we have some parsnips as well because I like to make mixed vegetable pies. Um, and uh, the second um, greenhouse is also pretty much done. In the next episode, I'm going to be uh, making quite, working on quite a lot of the other uh, rooms or parts of the greenhouse. Uh, I kind of wish they could be just like one big greenhouse, but you know, it's fine. And I do eventually, I mean like it's very, a lot of extra work for not really much payoff, but I do eventually want to replace most of the walls of the greenhouse with glass so that uh, it looks like a proper greenhouse. But I don't know, we'll, 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 we'll consider that. Maybe, you know, maybe some input from the comments could tell me what, what do you think I should do with the greenhouse? Should I go full greenhouse or keep it um, kind of practical with just a glass roof? Cause it looks fine, uh, it looks all right. But, uh, and we wanted, I wanted to finish up the, the roof at the very least. Cause, um, you know, th it, that at the very least does look nice. And, uh, I spotted this rabbit here and I wanted to see if I could kill it with the bow, which I could. And I, was it two shots? Yeah. Two shots. I don't know which arrows I'm using. I'm not sure which ones that I just end up, I just use. Cause it like, I have like three types in my inventory, copper, flint, and uh, tin bronze, but, and I, I decided to do, um, put down some road because I've been meaning to do that for a while. Anyway, um, that's gonna do it. If you enjoyed this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.